everybody. So I want to go over another sighting, another witness that had came forward. He was a truck driver driving down Highway 26 in, a quarter mile, in Oregon. And at Salmonberry Road, he saw a gray black truck driving around erratically. Had a little boy in the car that looked like Tyron. And Salmonberry Road. is a dirt road so we drove about 40 minutes out of Beaverton Oregon we left Skyline School to get here the uh, witness that was that reported this was a truck driver um, and he reported this or saw this on uh, June 5th 2010 and yeah Salmonberry Road is a very out in the middle of nowhere gravel road wow in a quarter mile turn left and uh, yeah just being out here I can already say like I don't know why would you be out here with a little kid? But anyway, my mind instantly um, thinks about David Durham, uh, Sharif is the first person who pointed out David Durham to me. And he was a guy that lived on Savi Island for about six years. He was a volunteer firefighter. There was a road right there that went off to the left. Um, he was a volunteer firefighter. And the fire department let him go in June acting very erratically sorry the camera's shaking there's like a lot of uh, bumps on this road so um, so you got David Durham in June he's a volunteer firefighter he's fired in June he, he gets this shoulder injury also in June and starts taking painkillers. His brother, Michael Durham, said that it got to the point where David couldn't decipher reality and not reality. And um, so, you know, David is acting very strange in June. And he drove a 1984 Dodge pickup truck. It's black. Um, MCSO actually taped off his home address on Savvy Island. Um... His home was directly where the sighting was of um, a redhead woman driving a um, white pickup truck. Um, so they searched around his property. Now, fast forward some. I'm just doing a little U-turn right here because I'm not going way up this um, mountain road because we're going to be losing daylight soon. But back to David Durham, his property was searched 
So a lot of people always wondered why was his property searched? You know, did he um, take off with Chiron? Did he kidnap him? Did he bring him up this road? Um, that was one speculation, one theory, is that he was the one driving with Chiron up this road. Um, on the way up here, about six miles east of this road, you've got Wolf Creek, you've got Nahalem River, you've got Highway 26, um, Timber Junction. We saw a few uh, major roads that led to Baxton, that led to um, Vernonia. And then if you go further west, about 20 something miles, you're almost to Seaside, Oregon, or you could turn left on Highway 101 and start heading up the coast west. Now, back to David Durham, his property was in a straight away from Logie Road, which is across Highway 30 from Savvy Island. Um, and Desiree Young mentions in the blog that I actually have by Blink on Crime that up Logie Road at the top of uh, Rocky Point, uh, south of Rocky Point is where they did a search for Chiron. And like I said, that's a straightaway from David Durham's property. And then in January 2010, David Durham, you know, he's already for six months acting erratic, acting a little bit crazy, not being able to decipher reality from non-reality. He is not himself. Many of his friends and family were very worried about him. He decides in January to start packing stuff. He packs up duffel bags um, full of camping gear. He dresses up in full army gear from head to toe. Now, it's been said that he was... Um, very good landscaper and outdoorsman so he's packing up his duffel bags he's grabbing his camping gear he's leaving town he grabs his dog and he starts heading to Lincoln City Oregon he gets to Lincoln City Oregon he goes to a gas station he goes in he goes out he's actually on camera he gets seen in the store and then he leaves when he leaves, he gets pulled over by an officer, and it's just a routine um, stop. From what I understand, he had something wrong with um, either a headlight or a brake light or something like that, but it was a pretty much a basic routine stop, and he pulls over. The cop comes up to the car, wants to know his information. He again is acting very strange or whatever. He ends up shooting this cop. And then there's a high speed chase, David Durham from Lincoln City all the way to Walport, Oregon. Now that is probably 40, 45 minutes away. And you're in my neck of the woods, by the way, because I travel to Lincoln City. I go to Walport to go crabbing. I hang out in Newport. I hang out in Depot Bay. All of these areas where he's going to have to pass. So, I mean, like, you've got a 45 minute to an hour drive from Lincoln City to Walport. There is a full-blown chase and somewhere in Walport he pulls over to the side of the road and he throws his dog out now people have speculated that he threw his dog out because he thought you know um, they're gonna keep sh they're gonna start shooting at his car and his dog's gonna get hit or he's going to wreck his car and his dog's gonna be in it and his dog's gonna end up getting killed because according to his best friend he loved 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 his dog 
another one of his friends, you know, describe him as a really nice guy. But here you got him shooting an officer, high speed chase down Highway 101 from Lincoln City to Walport, Oregon, throwing his dog out, and then pulls over to the side of the road, gets out of the truck, and he flat friggin' disappears. And I am telling you, Walport is this little bitty tiny little town on the coast. There's nothing. There's a grocery store. There is a dock where people go crabbing. People come and go there at that um, park. They rent boats and go crabbing and get out um, on uh, Alcea Bay. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a couple coffee shops. Um, you've got the Alcea Bay Resort on the other side of Alcea Bay Bridge, but there isn't a lot to do. You're pretty much there crabbing, fishing, clamming, and it's just a really little tiny little town. Now, he did have family in Waldport. We know that. They actually went there to search for him. David Durham is wanted. He is America's Most Wanted list, and he's never been found since. So, we do not know where David Durham is. We do not know why, all of a sudden, in June of 2010, he starts acting crazy and erratic and can't tell, you know, reality and not reality. Like, this guy has flat out lost his mind. So, was it because he kidnapped Kyron and got paranoid? Did he um, have something to do with it? Help somebody do something? Was he the one that was up here June 5th, you know, taking Kyron up that road? I mean, come on. That was Salmonberry Road, guys, and that was in the middle of nowhere, straight up gravel road, not some place I would be, I don't know. I wouldn't be up there unless I was hunting, um, yeah, that would just went straight up. You're in the middle of nowhere. So, no one's really going to see you do anything up there. A lot of people have talked about this. So, I just thought that I would drive up here. You know, it took us almost 40 minutes to get up here just to see it. And now that I'm really glad that I did because I had no clue that Salmonberry Road was a gravel road. I thought... It was just a regular road off of the road, you know? So that is pretty much, um, looks like a logging road, kind of. So, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I just wanted to come up here and show you guys Salmonberry Road. I'm glad I came up. It really helped me um, visualize this and just talking about it again, I get a little bit excited because I mean, yeah, if he had anything to do with Kyron disappearing, he's going to start acting erratic, you know, especially if he hurt Kyron, you know, you're going to get paranoid. I mean, he's taking painkillers. His family and his friends said something about maybe it was the painkillers that was making him a little bit loopy. I mean, this guy is a volunteer firefighter, you know, he must have been a pretty great guy. A normal guy everybody talked about him like he was a normal great guy but all of a sudden he's just not and you know if I kidnapped a little boy if I hurt him or if I had anything to do with like passing him along to somebody else I might get a little bit paranoid I might start acting a little bit crazy why would you shoot an officer just because you're getting pulled over for a routine stop you're not going to you know shoot an officer just because you're getting pulled over. You're paranoid about something. I mean, what was he afraid of? And why the hell is he dressed in full-blown army gear in January when he leaves town? Like, it was like he knew he was ready to leave and be gone. Uh, you know, taking his camping gear and everything else. Was he just leaving and getting lost so no one could ever find him? You know, what was the purpose of all that? Like, you're leaving your property, you're leaving your friends and family, you're taking your dog, you're leaving. What, why are you doing that? Why? 
Nothing makes sense with this man. So that's the story of David Durham. We are done for the day. Um, I really appreciate everybody coming and like watching all of the videos and being here for Kyron. Um, if you have anything to add, please add it, you know. I love to hear other people's theories. If I'm missing something, you know, let me know. Uh, like I said, there is Wolf Creek, Nahalen Bay, uh, roads leaving to Baxton, Vernonia. Maybe somebody may have seen this truck down any of those roads or in this area. Timber Junction, um, you're really close to Seaside, Oregon, Highway 101, Rockaway, Oregon. So, you know, David Durham drived a 1984 black Dodge truck. It was an older version. Um, yeah. So, have a great day, everybody. And, you know, shoot me some more ideas for more videos. I'll be glad to do them. Have a great night.